musical chairs, sorry. Secondly, uh, another World Cup hooker, of course. Uh, away with South Africa, great to see him come back from injury as well uh, after a long time out last year. Ladies and gentlemen, fans' favourite, Scott Ricks. No, that wasn't on purpose, obviously. But it was, it was fairly apt. Um, anyway, and lastly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, he's been a tremendous service to this club, both on and off the field, and we, uh, we have a bit of a chat with him this evening to maybe the last chance some of you will get to say uh, goodbye to him. But ladies and gentlemen, just uh, off down the road, he's not going too far. Uh, he leaves the uh, defence in incredible stature. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Gustav. Right, we'll start with some stats, uh, get them out of the way. Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's been good, yeah, it has been Very good, good. <laughs> thanks, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was even, it, was, it was great to see you on Saturday when you walked out the lift and lamped me in the stomach straight off, so that was a great welcome back from Christmas, thanks very much. Yeah, I'll be sorry to see you go. Um, we'll start with some stats, uh, let me get this right. Played 12-1-12 in competitive rugby since September. Umpteen thousand tries scored. Eight conceded. You landed yourself a decent job, didn't you? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I think, obviously, um, I think I said it before, uh, you know, I've been very privileged to have a lot of nice things said about me lately, personally, but we've got 44 players in our squad that all contribute week in, week out during the training week. Uh, you know, I've not made one of those tackles in the last 12 games, I don't think. Um, you know, I've not conceded, I've not won, I've stopped a try of getting scored, so it's the effort of all these guys uh, that's obviously allowed me the opportunity to do what I'm going to do. Talk a little bit from your point of view just how this season's gone first and foremost, because obviously it has been fantastic, both in attack and defence, and the boys are, uh, to a man, I don't think you've seen a poor performance from anybody this season. I'm just, I know they hold themselves in incredibly high standards and they'll probably say that themselves, but as a fan and everybody else watching, I think we can't really fault it, 12 from 12 unbeaten, it's been fantastic. As a coach, and what's the feeling within the coach's box when you're sitting up there watching the lads doing that out on the field? Um, it's always pretty you know, relaxed in the sense that we're confident in the team's ability to perform. Um, for me, obviously, I'm a defence coach, so if I go into a game feeling worried about something, I've got problems. You know, I've got to have belief in the fact that these guys are going to perform what we've spoken about during the week. I've also got unbelievably talented players like Jamie and, to a lesser degree, Skulk, that can actually <laughs> carry, out, um, carry out what we try and ask them to do. Um, so, you know, going go into the game, we're pretty comfortable with the plan that we have. Um, we're doing a lot of analysis, as you've probably heard about many times before. Uh, and then we've got 23 guys that can action uh, these plans pretty well. Turn your phone off, come on. Um, so we can, we can do these pr pretty well. So there is times in games, obviously, where things get a little bit tense, a bit terse, and Mark's, although for his calm exterior uh, to the media, gets pretty tense inside the box, and he's got a decent right jab. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're, we're in a good place. Our pre-season wasn't very effective, as we all know. Um, we, did, we didn't perform very well. Uh, and then we hit the ground rolling, as it happened against Sale, with a six-try win and, and no tries conceded. Um, so we're in an unbelievably good place, yeah. Jamie, uh, from a uh, player's point of view, I mean, what, what's been the key, do you think, to this? I mean, it is an unbelievable start to this season. I can't think of another team that have gone this well for a long time. I mean, it, it's been fantastic to watch. How's it been to play in, obviously, presumably fantastic. And what do you think has been the, the main key to it? Yeah, it's been thoroughly enjoyable, really, to be honest. Everyone, I think that's sort of the main reason why we're playing so well, is everyone's enjoying being part of this team. And, you know, it's, it's been that way for the last six seasons, seven seasons. But, you know, for us to be playing this way at the minute, it's, it's just great to be a part of. I think the main reasons, the foundations of our game are very good. Our set piece is good. Our defence is brilliant. Um, and in attack, we're scoring really good tries. And I think, you know, that's all connected up now. And um, Everyone's very confident in the, in the plan and, and we're putting it out on the field, which is great. And for you personally, things going from strength to strength, of course. Uh, was it first touch on Saturday, was it? Just notch another try up, thanks very much, and all this. But uh, you can't seem to stop scoring. Mostly you're scoring from around 22, 23 metres out. I think Mako was talking the other day about what is the secret to your pace? <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, and it's, it's an optical illusion. Um, I don't really know. I, I just I'm sort of panic when I get the ball, so I just try. And yeah. That's fair enough. But the uh, competitive nature with Skulk still ongoing. But there's no. I don't, I think, is it through Skulk's choice that there's no chocolate bar bets this year, mainly because he's so far down? 
Yeah, Skull scored. I've only scored two. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. You're right. Only two. Optical illusion. It's more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just because you score them so quickly. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, Skull, great to see this man going well. You've nurtured him for a few years now. Uh, and obviously now you've sort of, you know, both pushing each other very hard on the field. But <coughs> talk about how far Jamie's come in the last sort of year or so. Embarrassing for a minute. I'm actually hating this. Um, <laughs> do you see this guy playing this well? <laughs> Um, for me, it's just great seeing Jamie perform. It's not, not only just for this season, but last season he's been fantastic. Um, my dream for him, and that's why I've taken a bet about five years ago, that he will play in this World Cup. And he did play in this World Cup. For me, it was sad not seeing him performing that I know he can. So I think he could have added a lot to the group. Uh, from a, not, not only just from, from his um, experience and his He's um, set piece oriented, but around the park as well. So from, from a World Cup, that was said, um, good in a way, in play, being part, bad in a way, not playing enough. Um, but then seeing him going from strength to strength from last season to this season, it is um, almost like a dad looking at his child. Um, <laughs> now, now being proud of this guy, and now I'm his little dog every weekend by the side of the but honestly, it's, for me, it's, it's great to see. Um, he previously asked why are we so su successful this season uh, compared to last season and the season before that. I think these guys coming through now, they've had, uh, I think, you know, 150 games or close to it. Um, we've got a lot of the, the guys being together for six years now. There isn't the younger guys. The younger guys are learning from, like Maris, learning from him, learning from Cocky. And we a very experienced group that uh, not only play very talented, but um, likes to be in each other's company. And if you've got that with experience, uh, I think you've got a very dangerous group of players together. Talk to me about spending time in each other's company, because obviously you've been at the club about six years now, so I think Kevin, you've always been a pretty strong personality, always a big smile on your face. I'm sure everyone on the test do here, both on and off the field. And a lot of that first sort of culture was built by, I know Brendan always used to say, didn't he goes, you never have a bad day, do you, at this club? It's always, you know, every, every day's a great day. Um, but what's the youth coming through? What's it like to have them within the group now in terms of their sort of attitude and their, you know, uh, sort of, well, good culture around a good environment to be in? Are they key to that now? And can you take a little bit of a backward step and chill out a bit? Um, Ed, to be honest, Ed, we've never seen it as um, academy or seniors. Um, from the word go, everyone is on the same level. And I think if we've got that in an organisation where uh, I don't have to tell or uh, try to be the Mako guy, I'm just who I am and I embrace Jamie for, he, for who he is, and everybody's on the same level, I think you can go far, uh, quite a far away. And then the only way you can lead is by example. And if you do that on, from a training point of view, uh, it, it happens on the pitch. And that's what You've got, we've got a, I think a group of 40, and it starts actually with the coaches that uh, they work incredibly hard. They're always prepared. They always prepare us for the weekends. And if we've got from the top down guys that's working hard, it's one big thing that makes this this uh, team very successful. It's the work ethic we've got from top to bottom, from the guy that uh, analyzes our games every weekend to the guy that washes our kids. And each guy is just as important, and that makes a big difference to. I think Saracens um, and of course uh, you guys, it's, it's great having the support we've got and uh, seeing this weekend 10,000 people was amazing on a day like uh, on Saturday where it was uh, pretty bad weather. <laughs> um, let's talk about a couple of, uh, we'll sort of work our way back up the roof so don't worry guys, they will get a chance to embarrass you soon, but um, let's talk about a couple of new additions to the Saracens family coming in. Firstly. Uh, I'm sure most of you obviously heard the news this afternoon. Of course, Skulk Berger will be joining us uh, from the start of next season, which we're all obviously delighted about. Skulk, uh, he's the man that you know very well indeed from obviously time in South Africa and of course Western Province and the Stormers. What will he bring to the group and what's he like as a guy? Um, I'm quite happy, uh, laid back. This guy is 10 times what I am. He's the most chilled out guy you'll ever meet face to face. On the on the pitch, he's, a, he's an animal, really. Um, <laughs> You'll see him switch. Um, he likes a beer, I can tell you that, uh, after the games. But from my point of view, it's quite amazing what the club achieved with this, or Gazi, uh, Gazi Mark and the whole coaching squad. Is you, you have to 
fought off the European clubs. The, you have to fight the Japanese, the Yen club, and then South Africa. To get a, a guy of that magnitude to our club is, is pretty special. Um, he is very excited to come. Uh, uh, one thing that uh, I think it, the selling point was what we've got here. We've got a, a great group of players. We do things differently. Uh, we treat people well. In exchange, we all we ask players are to work incredibly hard. And it starts from the coaches. Um, and and to get a guy like that, uh, you'll see next season, you'll probably ju uh, join us in June. Um, he's going to give everything to this club. Um, he doesn't pick and choose matches. He just puts his uh, body on the line and enjoys doing it. Um, you'll see he's a great guy and another South African. <laughs> <laughs> just add some fuel to the fire there, well done for the, the naysayers. I must, I must say we are losing a lot of surfers at the moment, I'm feeling all alone and my English isn't that good so I need another Have, you, um, have you got your course. English passport now? Um, I'm getting it in April. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> God save the Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Look out for that language test. Um, Jamie, a, uh, another uh, newcomer to the club. Uh, did he start today? Do you think he first started today? Uh, is Ian Peel? I think I was hearing he was starting today. I'm not sure, but obviously a coach of extraordinary, you know, extremely high caliber as well. Coming to the side, someone you presumably know well from your time in the England Nature a little bit, and obviously he's a, he's a, he'll come in as a, a very renowned scrum coach. And uh, you know, great attestment to that is the fact that he's being pulled in by England for the Six Nations as their scrum coach. What are we expecting from him? What do you expect from him? And how, how much are you looking forward to working with him again? No, I'm really excited about it. I've, I sort of worked with him in bits. Um, he was sort of a scrum consultant when I was coming through the age groups. Um, but sort of the main thing that shouts out to me is his character. He's, he's got great character. He's, um, the way that he is with the players, um, he'll fit right in in this coaching staff. And um, he's a very knowledgeable guy, specifically about the scrum, uh, but in all aspects of the game. And that's. That's something that's very exciting, and I'm sure that he can add a lot to this group. And um, yeah, I've, you know, I keep saying excited, but I'm excited about working with him because he's he's such a great coach, and he's done such great things with the with the underage groups and the under 20s. I think he's won two World Cups or whatever it is. So um, to be working with someone like him, I'm sure um, is only going to make us all better. Gussie, word on him from you. Obviously, you'll be working with him for the remainder of your time here, and then of course with him again when you join up for the Six Nations as well. What, what from your point of view, what's he bring? Um, a hearty appetite, for one. Um, I actually played with Peely when I was a kid, so I, I, I went through the sort of junior uh, England age groups with Peely, so I know him pretty well. Uh, look, he's, he's a great guy, obviously. Um, he's going to take charge of the scrubs in due course. Uh, obviously, I did the lineouts of the club, so we tried to introduce him to lineouts and uh, our vernacular uh, for lineouts, which can be a little bit tricky, as, as Scott can testify from time to time. Um, only because he never pays any attention whatsoever. The, the, actually, Scott, you, you start talking there before about setting example by training. You don't train. He's <laughs> <laughs> doing a language test. <laughs> Mental training is just as <laughs> sort of um, where was I? Yeah, so Peter, yeah, so no, he, he'll take charge of the line outs and the scrubs. It just takes a little bit of transition. So obviously there's a, a crossover period with me going and, and Ian arriving. So um, he's got now two, three weeks to try and get up to speed as fast as possible. Uh, and it won't be, you know, full, fully in task by three weeks' time. But the playing group's now so strong and they've got autonomy over the calling system. They know what they're doing in terms of the scrum. It's just going to be subtle changes that he can introduce and force his own personality on the group as well, you know, so he'll do a great job. Good. Um, all right, Good. so you've been with us for, let me get this right, I think, nine, is it nine years? Was that right? Ten years. Two on the field and then eight off the field. That's maths, yes. Um, <laughs> memories. What are, what are your abiding memories of the club? Well, give us a couple of examples of the strongest memories that you've got or the best memories here, because obviously we are all about making memories, so... Yeah, um, one. <laughs> um, I, I guess if I try, I mean, I've not really had too much time to think about it, but the, the ones that sort of stick out in my head, uh, as a player, we went to the uh, semi-final of the, of the European Cup. Uh, we lost to Munster, unfortunately, with a dubious penalty given away against Richard Hill, uh, somewhere in the corner there. I mean, he penalises Hill in his last season, for God's sake. Yeah. Um, but they did, <laughs> and we lost. Uh, so, but you know that, that sort of uh, season, uh, we didn't perform too well in the league as it transpired. We sort of fall away towards the end, and 
and you know, bad memory got clipped by Bath by 50 points, 60 points, which was pretty disheartening. But uh, you know, that Munster experience was good. We had a good run in in, in the in the league the year before, so there's a few games there I could probably cherry pick. But you don't want to hear about those sort of games. I think the main ones for me over the last sort of five six years would, would be Claremont at Twickenham. Um, you know, to, to put in that sort of defensive performance against a team of that caliber at that stage of a competition was immeasurable, was immense. Um, but still, probably my, my finest sort of moment with the group was. Um, on a playing side anyway, was uh, Leicester, the, the year we won the final. I think we defended 34 phases in three minutes extra time. Uh, to do that after the amount of effort the boards had put in was incredible. And I think, you know, we, we all sort of took a bit deep breath back there and saw what special group we have. Uh, other than that, we had a cracking time in Budapest, uh, now that you made it, and lucky. Um, <laughs> uh, but we've been Budapest, we've been Miami, we've done uh, Cape Town, we've done Verbia. And all those, the opportunity to sit with friends and, and have a beer and, and uh, forge relationships that go beyond the rugby pitch it is probably the best memory I have. Jamie, memories of Guzzy, good and bad, maybe. You brought Wolves into a meeting, which I'm pretty. Yeah, pretty I remember that. that was awesome. Um, Morris both was out there with his Ugg boots on for ages, trying to get him to eat. Them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing them; they were incredible. You're stupid. <laughs> yeah, most stupid. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think the sort of. The overall memory will be the, the infamous team meetings and um, how much abuse he's given George Cruz over the years. I'm a big fan of that, so uh, <laughs> fingers crossed that will continue with the yeah, that hopefully will continue. Yeah. Um, no, I th no I've, there are so many memories, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we perform the way we do specifically defensively off the back of the amount of hard work that Guzzi's put in and, um, you know, we put in some amazing defensive performances and, and a lot of that's down, down to Guzzi, so we're uh, forever grateful for that. Scala, talk to us about that last 10 or so minutes uh, at Twickenham. Were the players sort of thinking in, in that final in 2009, were the players sort of think, thinking that, God, he'll never forgive us now if we give this up, will he? You know, is it, did you hear Guzzi in the back of your voice or, or back of your head rather? Or was it just that intensity that Guzzi brought to the training field that saw us through on that day? I was actually just thinking, blow the final whistle, please. I'm, stuffed. I'm so tired, I just want to have a beer and relax. Um, for me, just quick, just on a different point, on Gazi, um, you'll never find a guy that puts so much time and effort and brings a, a vibe to a squad like Gazi. Um, he's going to be a massive loss for, for me personally and I think for our squad, uh, not only just as a coach but as a friend. Uh, Gazi, thank you. Uh, was was awesome, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you perform. Unfortunately, against South Africa, uh, <laughs> for England, and um, thanks, mate. It's been um, truly. <laughs> Yeah, I hate seeing him go. It's uh, I'm, I'm a very emotional guy. Actually, I cry a lot. Um, yeah, if my wife beats me every now and then. Um, Guzzi, uh, first of all, girl. Guzzi, how obviously we're obviously sorry to see you go. Of course we are. Um, but it is sort of a fantastic achievement to go on and, and be offered a job coaching your national side. How excited about you going over there? And, oh, yeah. that excited. Um, I'll carry on, regardless. I'm sure someone in the gods will sort that out. Um, how excited are you about going over and getting, and getting a crack at the Six Nations and, and further afield with England? Look, I, I haven't really had time to sort of get my head around the whole sort of concept of the moment. Uh, I'm still committed to obviously this, this wonderful club uh, that we all talk so nicely about. And, um, you know, I want to try and leave it in the best possible uh, hands and, and make it as difficult as possible for Alex to emulate me. Um, but by leaving a brilliant record, you know, we're never defended so well as we are right now. And obviously, I take charge of the line answers equally excited as Alex was at the weekend. We were with the line answers as well. We scored two tries and should have scored a third, but for the terrible decision by Greg Garner on Brad Barrett. Um, you know, the next two, three weeks is, is massive for me. Then we can leave top in the group, we can leave unbeaten. Um, you know, that's where my sort of head's at, at the moment. After that, I'll have time out of the week, uh, acclimatisation, I guess, to prepare for Scotland. Uh, hopefully see a lot of familiar faces, um, you know, hopefully in the team, and um, you know, go from there. But it's, it's, as I said at the very beginning, it's, it's a wonderful privilege uh, to be offered the opportunity, but it's a privilege afforded to me because of the effort of these guys here. So I'm very aware of that. 
you know, at the end of the day, I'm a salesman. I stand at the front of a room and try and sell a message and get as many people as possible to buy into it. <laughs> and for the large part, over over eight years of coaching now, seven years doing the defence and, and line outs and so on, it's, it's kind of worked, you know. So we like to do it with a bit of a smile on our face. We like to have fun. And uh, that's kind of Saracen's way, you know. We're a good set of blokes um, that enjoy to this company, uh, firmly believe that we're doing something uh, and treating people the right way, importantly. And uh, you know, hopefully the results are speaking for themselves for one, but more important, the performances um, are putting us in a position that we can challenge long term uh, for not only domestic domination, but obviously in Europe as well. We'll, uh, we'll wrap it up very shortly because I know obviously um, you've got to probably get out and start your analysis because you're never going to start working on it until the minute that you leave. But um, <coughs> is there anything you'd like to say to everybody in the room? Obviously, 10 years at the club and you, and you move on with our, uh, you know, with our best wishes. Is there anything you'd like to say to any of these guys? Look, I, I guess just thank you for everyone for the for the warm welcome I received just now. Um, obviously, I've not seen everybody before, but I've seen a, quite a few of you guys around, and, and you know the well wishes, the pats on the back, and uh, the support for the team is, is massive. You can't uh, ever estimate, um, sorry, ever overestimate the, the, the amount of impact you can have by turning up to a game, supporting like you did the weekend. Um, what these guys go through in a week uh, and what they do on a Saturday is phenomenal. The, the game's moved on so much. In the last 10 years, never mind 20 years, 30 years, you know, it's so much more physical. The demands on them are, are incredible, the sacrifices that they make to put in the performances that they do uh, and the effort that they put in, you know, I, I think to, to be at the top of the league as we are, uh, to, have, to have competed at the top for the last six seasons, it's just an incredible achievement. It'd be brilliant to see you guys keep turning up week in, week out, bring more friends along. Um, you know, it's a, it's a truly wonderful club to be part of in any capacity that you can be and continue to give you support and uh, for that I thank you for what you gave for me and I urge you to continue it for the team. Ladies and gentlemen, I think, we'll, uh, I think that's a good, certainly a good note to end it on and, uh, and I know you're all here and, and you drove to, to wish Gussie well but of course support the Storm as well so do get behind the, uh, the boys out there the night. Of course I'm beaten as well, defending their own title from last year as well so be, get behind them and hope they can do a job on Bath. A uh, couple of, uh, or oh, last bit of housekeeping, there will be another fans forum uh, in a few weeks time. Uh, it will be communicated out to you probably end of January, early February. Uh, we'll have a couple of the players down. It'll also be your opportunity to put some questions to Heath as well, of course, our, our incoming CEO. He's been with us a while now, but I know he would like, welcome the opportunity for you all to get down and fire some questions his way and, and understand his stamp on the club. But uh, I will let you get outside, let you get a drink and food. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Firstly, Scott Briss and Jamie George. And ladies and gentlemen, so a huge round of applause if you wish him well. Defence Coach Supreme, Paul Gustav.